Hello, thank you for joining this product overview on our quality management solution. My name is Narav Shah from Two Increase. I'm a solution architect. Today, my plan is to go through our quality management solution and show you the processes and functionality available out of the box. Our quality management solution is a three step process. The first step is to create the incident, which is a planned or unplanned interruption. The second step is to review the measurement that includes creating a check sheet for the measurement. And then from there, we go ahead and register the measurement so we could then continue and take further analysis on that quality incident, such as maybe doing a return to vendor or doing a item recast journal and moving inventory to a quarantine location. The first example I'm going to go through is where there is a automatic quality test that has to happen for a production order moving through its specific routing. So here what we see in Business Central is our quality management role center that has in it all the major activities that a quality manager would perform on a day-to-day -day basis. The first here we could see are new incidents that are created, any incidents that are ready to be measured, and any that are registered already. And along with that, we can see check sheets. We can see if there's any check sheets assigned to other inspectors or how many unassigned check sheets that need to be reviewed and sent over to different inspectors to work on. And if there's any to-dos for the quality department. So what I'll go do first is create a release production order. And from there, complete a quantity for a specific routing step. So we could see that incident automatically created. So I'll go ahead and select new here. I'm just creating my production order. Okay, wrong location. And I'm going to refresh. I hit OK. The production order is refreshed at this point. There's our line. I could go to our routing and look at our routing details for this production order and we'll see that we have one routing step and this particular step has a quality check instruction against it. I'm going to go and complete a quantity of two using what we have called the production journal and I'll go and just put in two here as the last step. I'll consider this step as finished. Now hit post and we'll say yes. So the lines were successfully posted. Our production number is 101063. Just want to make a reference to that. Now I'll go ahead and navigate to our quality management menu and I'll go to our incidents. And if I look at our last incident here, incident number 55, inspect, it's for our item. And here's our production number 101063. Created by me and Shah, created date and created time. 11.16. So this is what we call a planned interruption, where we have a planned quality check within the process that the system has automatically created our quality records for. So now a quality manager or an inspector could start queuing up their workflow or their work list for the day and could see what production orders or which incidents they need to go and work on or that they should be expecting coming through their department here. So in my case, I got incident number 55. Here, so I have inspection 55. There's one measurement record created, so I could open up the measurement record. Here's a measurement record for quantity of two. I'm going to edit. And if I look at this measurement record, this measurement record number is QM00175. And there's a template. There's a template code that we could assign to specific items or a group of items using the item category code, which would represent the type of questions that would be asked on the check sheet when there's an inspection record created for that item or type of item. In this case, the item here, SW10001, has this template code, man operation, assigned to it. So anytime it goes through and there's a inspection request, the system will automatically create a check sheet with the questions assigned to this template code. In this measurement, if I come down here, I'll see that there's check sheet CS00177 assigned to this particular production order, production 101063. I'm going to go into edit on this check sheet. And we'll see here on this check sheet, the system 
out of the two that we had on the production order and that we completed against that routing, there's an inspection for a quantity of one. And the reason why that is, is because the system automatically recognizes it should be one based on the measurement template. The measurement template for this particular item is defined as a percentage of the quantity that needs to be inspected. So the sampling method is percentage. Other options you have for sampling is lot, specific lot, size, specific quantity, and we have what we call the AQL method, which is a statistical process control method based on vendor performance and quantity of items being received. So in this case, I did a very simple percentage-based inspection for the sampling method. So I said 50%. So because we're making two on this production order, our quantity to inspect is one on this check sheet. If I go down here on this check sheet, and if I just minimize, collapse this, so we have three questions that are assigned to this particular item as part of our measurement template. So this says, the first question is, how many screws with nuts are in the package? This is a numeric type of question, so the result has to be numeric. I want, to, I want you to focus here on the bottom here under the target value, the lower left says two. So this question, the only answer that will be accepted as part of this question is target value of two. So if I were to put two in here, the system automatically recognizes that this is an acceptable value and this particular question is accepted because it meets the tolerance. If I were to put three here, the system will reject this question. I could manually accept this question if I wanted to, override it even though it's rejected, or keep it here as rejected so then it goes to, to the quality manager to review, or possibly there could be a retest that occurs to get confirmation of this rejected result for this particular question. In any case, in a, a live environment, you may not want to show this to your inspectors because you want the results to be objective. So there's functionality to turn this off. But for our presentation purposes, we have this left on at the moment. So I'll go ahead and just accept this. So this question is accepted with the result of two. If I look at the second question, how is the sound of the bell? It's a lookup type question, and the only values that are accepted is melodic and normal. So if I hit the drop down, I'll see a table that appears, and here are the answers to that specific question, and I could select one of these answers. If you notice, if I select loud, the score is zero, which would effectively mean it's a rejected result. Whereas if I selected melodic, the score would be eight. If I did normal, the score will be 10. And the reason why the score is important is each question within the check sheet could be weighted, which would then ultimately give an overall weighted average score for that check sheet, which would fall within an acceptable or rejected tolerance for that particular check sheet. So if I were just to select normal here, reduce the size of this a little bit here. So if I just did normal here and hit OK, you notice that this is accepted now. The third question is the installation instructions included with the bell and the target value is yes. This is a Boolean field, meaning it's a true or false field. And I could just go ahead and just type in yes here. Now, in this case, with the way I answer the question, this check should, should ultimately be approved. So if I open up my general tab again and I hit complete on the ribbon, do you want to complete the check sheet? I'll say yes. And now the results of this check sheet is accepted. And this is my inspector ID, which automatically got associated to my check sheet. And my weighted average score is 35, which means it's an accepted check sheet. I could hit OK here. And now when I come back to my measurement, QM00175, I could come down here. And as a quality manager, I could then come in here and further approve this check sheet before it becomes a registered measurement. So I could come down to this check sheet. CS00177, you notice it's highlighted green, meaning that the check sheet has already been approved or accepted. I could go and approve this as a manager. And as soon as I approve it, the status of this measurement changes to accepted. I could go and register this measurement, or I could go ahead and perform a retest, which would create a new check sheet, a new check sheet number with identical questions. I could hit register here in our case, hit yes. Now you'll see that the measurement record is complete. And if I refresh the screen, we have number of registered measurements is one. And if I go to our registered measurement now, and just real quickly, you'll notice that record number 55 is now no longer highlighted, meaning it's complete. So if I go to quality management and I go to our registered measurements here, and I go down to the bottom, our RM0074 represents the registered measurement for that particular measurement record that was created, QM00175, and you notice that it's accepted. So if I were to go into this record itself, you'll see that I have a registered measurement 
and everything looks good, so I don't have to do further, but I could also review the check sheet that was processed for this particular registered measurement. So it tells me that there's a total of three questions and all three questions were accepted here on the fact box where my pointer is. And if we ever get a rejected registered measurement, the options we have here is to create a return document if it came over from purchase receipt. We could create a reclassification journal to move inventory from the current stocking location to another location. Or we could create a activity whereby we could scrap the inventory directly out of the system from the registered measurement. So you have a bunch of different options here. The next process I wanna show you here as part of our product overview demo is a purchase receipt. And I'm gonna go into our quality management record and what we're going to simulate is we're going to receive in an item and the item we're going to receive in if i look at our setup table it's going to be item 1120 from vendor 10,000, and the template code measurement template that we're going to apply on that purchase receipt is called per receipt and what that means is when i receive in this inventory into the system the system will automatically create an incident that we have to process very similar to the way we process the in process production order quality incident where we answer the questions on the check sheet register it and then we'll look at the registered measurement and close out of here so this is item number 1120 i'll create a purchase order Now select new on the purchase order. And this would be, again, vendor 10,000. Now come in here, add the item. And we'll just do this for location blue and we'll add quantity of two here. We'll release this purchase order. We'll post the receipt. We'll receive it in, hit okay. So now we received in the two. If I hit okay, get out of here. I go back to my departments go to quality management, I'll go to incident. We'll see here, now we have inspect record 56, and we'll see it for item 1120, vendor 10,000, and we'll see the date it was created, the time, 11.26 a.m. here, by Narav Shah, that's myself. So now I could go into that measurement, go ahead and link that measurement together. Let me bring this over on this side. And now we have measurement. There's our measurement document, purchase receipt. Remember that template was purchase receipt. Go to edit. Here's our purchase receipt measurement for this particular posted purchase receipt, 107120 for item 1120. Here's our check sheet associated to that measurement. We'll hit edit. And here's our questions that we have to answer for this check sheet. In this particular scenario, our measurement template has a set of questions that are different than the first set of questions that we saw on the in-process production order. In this case, there's two questions here. Was the packing list complete? And then the second question is any additional comments you want to use for this? So this is an example of where you have the inspector put some additional comments that are relevant possibly to this particular item inspection that's happening, but it's not really weighed or measured against the overall quality of this particular inspection result. So I could say, was the packing slip complete? And the target value is yes. I could put yes. You could type in any value here as like a comment. So I'll put comment here for inspector. And that's accepted. I'll go and hit complete. It's a completed check sheet. The status result is accepted. We'll hit OK. Now, in this case, if I don't trust the inspection that was done for this particular purchase receipt, I could call up a retest. I could hit a retest up here. And now you'll see on the bottom, I have a new check sheet. I have check sheet CS00179 now. So 179 is my active check sheet. I could go into edit and come in through here and have the inspector re-inspect this particular purchase receipt. Was the packing slip list complete? I could say no here in this case. And I could put some comments if I want here. I'll just put comments here. But on my retest, the packing slip was not complete. My actual test result was rejected. I'll go ahead and hit complete here. You want to complete this check sheet and now you'll see that the result has accepted on here because of that Boolean, but I'm going to select rejected here and we'll hit okay. And now this is a rejected check sheet. And I could still, as a quality inspector, approve the rejected check sheet. What they'll do is basically consider this measurement as rejected. And then I'll register the rejected measurement. Now the rejected measurement is registered. I could go back in my quality menu, go to my registered measurement, and my last one, RM0075, is my last registered measurement, which came from a purchase receipt, and you'll notice that it's rejected. If I go into that rejected measurement, I could see 
all the various different check sheets that were tested with and the questions and so on and so forth. I could then from here, if I had the authority or the security, I could go and quickly create my return document. So since this was a purchase receipt, I could select create return document and I could go and create my purchase return order or just go directly to a credit memo. If I know I'm just going to go ahead and receive a credit, I no longer want the item in from this vendor. But let's say I do want the item in from the vendor. I'll create a return order. I'll hit OK. And my return documents automatically created. My return document number is 1006. And at this point, you would follow the standard return document number through the system. One last thing I want to show you as part of the product overview demo is our create incident wizard. If there was an unplanned interruption on the floor, you could go ahead and use the wizard to create an incident record, which then would create your measurement and your check sheets for you to process through the system. So this is anything you find inventory that's bad in the system. If there's a customer return, you want to go ahead and log the record the original shipment number against the quality management record. You could do that using our create incident wizard effectively. So that takes us through our product overview demo. I hope you're able to see the features and functionalities that are included in our quality management solution. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to your partner. Thank you for your time today. And again, my name is Narav Shah from 2Increase, and I look forward to working with you in the future. Thank you.